welcome to the channel. So today we are going to take it back to basics for lighting automations and run through some ideas on how to automate your lighting through different triggers. Now we have all seen those YouTube videos where the super stylish person asks Miss A to turn the lights on or change the color of the lights, but we have moved on a long way since then. One of the main ideas for a smart home is where it performs actions without human input. And since smart lighting is probably the most used smart home device, this is where we're going to focus in this video. We want to create automations that perform actions based on non-human input and perform actions that improve our quality of life and are not just impressing our friends that really couldn't care less. This is part one of five videos that cover the different ways of triggering lights. So make sure to subscribe and ding that bell to be notified of when part two is released. So let's dive on in. So as usual, at the time of recording, I'm running on version 2023.10.5. So our first automation is probably the simplest yet the single most used automation in our houses and the one that is usually taken for granted, and that is turning the light on and off based on presence. For this example, you will need to have a motion sensor linked to your home assistant. I'll include in the affiliate links below some motion sensors that I would recommend. So our user case will be that we want to turn on the lights when we enter into a room and then turn off the lights after 10 minutes of no movement in the room. I won't go into the whole debate over PIR over millimeter microwave sensors. If you want to learn more about millimeter microwave sensors that I would recommend, then watch the video in the pop-up above or in the description below. For the purpose of this example, I'll be using an Akara P1 PIR sensor, a great sensor at a great price. Link in the description below. This is a Zigbee based sensor. So we'll assume that you've already linked it to your home assistant and it's running. So let's create the automation. Go into settings, then into automations, and then create an automation, followed by create a new automation. Firstly, we'll be adding a trigger, or more precisely, we'll be creating two triggers, one for presence and one for presence has stopped for 10 minutes. Obviously, you can change these values to meet your specific requirements. So to create an automation, we are going to add a trigger. We're going to select our device, select your motion sensor, select the trigger type. In this case, occupancy has been occupied. In the top right hand corner, there are three dots. Press this, press edit ID. Give the trigger an ID. In my case, I'm going to call it occupancy. We now need to create the second trigger. Add trigger, device, search for your device. Select your motion sensor. This time, we're going to say the trigger is going to be occupancy became not occupied. We're going to set the value for 10 minutes. In the top right hand corner of that trigger, press the three dots. Press edit ID. Allocate a trigger ID. No occupancy. We will have a condition for if the action is run, but this will be specific to an action and hence will not apply to both actions. As such, we will not add a condition at this stage. Next, we'll add the actions that we wish to take if the automation is triggered, which will be turning the lights on. This is where we'll take advantage of the two trigger IDs that we previously defined. Scroll down to Actions. We're going to select the Choose. Press the chevron, add a condition, triggered by. Now our two trigger IDs will show up. We're going to select Occupancy. Next, we'll add a condition. Now we're going to add a second condition. This condition is going to be that the sun is below the horizon. As such, we're going to select state. Type in sun. Select sun.sun. .sun. Click the chevron on the right hand side of state. Pick below the horizon. In other words, when this is triggered, it will also check to see if the sun is below the horizon before the actions are applied. Next, we'll add the actions specifically for this trigger. So make sure it appears within the bounds of this option. Press add action, select call service. The service we're going to be calling is turn lights on. You can search for this by typing lights colon space turn. Select light turn on. I'm gonna be turning on all of the lights inside of the study, which is an area that I previously defined. 
you can target an individual device or an entity. In my case, choose area. Search for the area that I wish to turn on. In my case, study. All the other variables are optional. As calling this service will turn on the target lights in their last state. If you want more details as to the options that are available, of which there are many, this could be a whole video on its own. If you'd like a specific video just on this topic, then let me know in the description below and I'll include it into the video production schedule. Next, we'll create the second action for turning off the lights. Scroll down to the next option, add option, add condition. We're going to be triggering this based on the trigger ID we set for the second trigger. Press triggered by, select no occupancy. There are no conditions here because of the fact that we want to turn off the lights independent of the sun position. Press add action, call service. Now we're going to search for lights turn off. We're going to select our target the same as we set before, study. Now we don't need to change anything here as we're just turning off the lights. Now press save and give it an appropriate name. Study, turn off lights based on motion and press save and we're done. So this automation will turn on the lights after sunset based on occupancy in the study, then turn off the lights in the room if unoccupied for 10 minutes independent of the sun position. This is part one of five videos that cover the different ways of triggering lights. So make sure to subscribe and ding that bell to be notified of when part two is released.